Welcome everyone to Token Topics. I had the pleasure of being invited to a webinar today and had the chance to hear Chris Southworth from ICC United Kingdom speak on the new law and the current state of trade and the benefits. So we're going to go over that and also some additional information on DLT technology and how businesses are realizing the benefits. Also great environmental news on DLTs that's actually helping to accelerate DLT progress and, and widespread adoption. Also, there's some big connections on the horizon through the DTCC and more. If you're an XDC fan, you don't want to miss this. Please subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date. I'm not paid for or sponsored by Zinfin or the XDC community. With that out of the way, let's dive in. All right, I have a special Decent Wallet announcement. We are thrilled to unveil an exciting integration that promises to elevate your crypto experience. The Decent Biometric Wallet has seamlessly integrated with Talisman Wallet Extension, offering users an enhanced level of security and unparalleled convenience in handling their Polkadot, Ethereum, and other EVM compatible assets. There's benefits to this integration, such as enhanced security, the integrated wallet offers an extra layer of security by combining the security feature of both the Decent Wallet and the Talisman Wallet Extension. For example, offline storage for private keys and biometric authentication makes your crypto assets more protected from unauthorized access. There's also a seamless user experience. The integration offers a seamless user experience by providing users with a single interface to manage their crypto assets. And there's also a wide range of different features. Now, if you'd like to learn more and how to connect the extension, I'm gonna put the link in the description. All right, let's go ahead and listen in on this conference. We're gonna hear from Chris Southworth from ICC United Kingdom. Look, it's great to have the opportunity to come and speak to you today. Um, I think the, the big news here is that English law has changed as of the 20th, 20th of you know, September. Um, what does that mean? That means that any company using English law no longer needs to use uh, paper documents for commercial trade documents, uh, e-bills of exchange, uh, EBLs or bills of lading, promissory notes, warehouse receipts, that sort of basket of, of documentation that relates to the possession of goods. Uh, perhaps more importantly is the English law change has totally transformed the legal environment internationally we now have English law, Singapore law, and US law all aligned to the new, uh, well, I say new, it's not that new, uh, the UNCITRAL model law on electronic transferable records. Uh, and that means that 80 to 90% of all international transactions can now go digital. So that international environment, legal environment, has radically changed in the last two weeks. Uh, what does that mean? That means that 60% of global trade finance can go fully digital. It means 80% of bills of lading can go fully digital. It means marine, uh, insurance, shipping, commodities, uh, and every company using English law, Singaporean law, or US law can remove all the paper uh, and now uh, benefit from fully digital transactions. So what does this mean on a practical level for companies? It means cheaper borrowing, cheaper lending, cheaper interest rates, faster payment terms. It means all the cost efficiencies of removing paper, uh, faster over the border processing times, uh, and all the costs that are associated, associated with that huge pain point for almost every company in the world, but particularly small companies who feel the pain the most. Here's a couple of good examples of exactly what's going on here. Uh, anyone who knows trade and trade transactions will know that there are effectively three layers of trade. There's the finance layer dealing with that financial transaction. There's the paperwork layer, which everybody has a, a real issue with. Uh, and then there's the physical, physical shipment of goods layer where goods are actually moving from A to B. That middle layer of paperwork is now being removed and being replaced with data. And those three layers are now collapsing into real time transactions that are happening now in minutes, not months. So here's two examples. There was a recent pilot between Abacor, uh, which is a UK SME trading sugar, 
or buying sugar from Nicaragua uh, and importing that sugar into the UK, they used an electronic bill of exchange and transacted in two hours uh, rather than the, the standard two weeks to two months. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mellon & Co. is another good example of a, another UK SME. Uh, I think they're the largest importer of melons in the UK, but they have 65,000 hectares of melon growing in northern Brazil. Uh, they were testing electronic bills of uh, lading, sorry, bills of lading, uh, and became, by just simply removing the paper and transacting digitally, they were 15% more profitable. Uh, these are just two examples of many examples, which we will publish in a report on the 28th of no November. But interestingly, we are now seeing transactions from uh, the likes of Mexico to Chile on chemicals, Australia to China on iron ore, uh, as well as the ones I've given you and many others. And every single one of those case studies, use cases, are demonstrating similar sorts of benefits. So what does this mean for all of us? Well, when we published the original legal reform business case for the UK and G7, we said uh, that in the UK alone, this was worth 25 billion in additional trade growth for SMEs. 224 billion in, in efficiency savings and 1 billion in additional trade finance. Actually, I think we've underestimated the figures. Uh, the government said 1 billion to which we challenged back, but actually looking at our figures compared with what we're actually seeing in the market, um, I think we've underestimated just exactly how big this means for trade. And ultimately, what, what does this mean? It means we're no longer talking about digitalization of trade, it's happening. The only question now is how quickly can we scale? Uh, uh, and we're already seeing companies who are not just testing, but scaling across the whole company and the whole glo global supply chain. So I, th I think the challenge now for companies who are not involved is there is an urgency to the task. The commercial benefits and the ROI are really clear. For those governments that have not reformed laws, I think we'll see a shift of companies onto the legal systems that they can use, English, Singaporean, US, uh, until those laws are in place on a local level. We haven't seen a single example of any government pushing back, saying they won't accept electronic transferable records. Uh, we're also hearing strong messages from the likes of China that there is no conceptual issue with any of this, uh, i.e. it's unlikely any of this will end up in, in a court, in a dispute case. So we're being very bullish uh, that actually we can get on with the task um, and it's now down to companies and corporates to, to start to utilize the benefits of these tools that are not just trade related, but also finance related. And then my final point around this is we're also seeing the emergence of new public utility architecture for trade uh, in the wake of trade lens, uh, Marco Polo, we trade commercial initiatives that try to create scalable um, uh, uh, architecture for trade. Uh, for whatever reason, those didn't succeed, whether that was design flaws or legal barriers. Now we're starting to see uh, a public law environment, which uh, trade digitalization can scale. We are, uh, well, we've obviously seen for the last few years, Trade Trust in Singapore offering a public source, open interoperable framework to handle um, commercial trade documents at low cost. Uh, and that's important because that's a useful mechanism for those companies that want to use that sort of open source approach. In other words, it's more choice. And then we've got obviously a raft of commercial providers in this space like SDOPS or Indigio or Bolero or any of the other commercial providers who are already operating in this space as well. So technology is not the problem. Uh, there is public utility architecture already available. Uh, we're working on a reliable systems framework uh, for global trade, not just UK trade. Uh, that should be in place uh, by this time next year. And that will do three things. It will meet the provisions of the Electronic Trade Documents Act. It will transition the approval system for the uh, marine insurers, the IGP and I clubs, uh, over to us. 
uh, and we will set out what the interoperable standards will be, uh, as David has quite rightly pointed out from the ICC Digital Standards Initiative. In other words, what we will say is reliable is also future-proof in terms of being interoperable. Uh, and then now the focus has to be on the cargo owners, the corporates, to work with these crucial companies who are the buyers and sellers of goods to scale all of this approach up at a global level. This is from the OMFIF, the Digital Monetary Institute. We're going to hear from Claudine Herman from Bank de France on why it's useful for niche products like unlisted shares to have settlement on DLT. We have seen, for example, that uh, for some uh, niche products like uh, um, unlisted uh, shares or shares of funds, uh, it's very, um, it can be very useful to um, have a settlement on a DLT because uh, um, you don't, do not have the settlement of this type of asset on, on traditional uh, uh, payment, uh, payment systems or platforms. This is great news, especially if you love the environment like I do. Accelerating e-certification. This is from the Blockchain Supply Chain Association. The Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation has released a publication with game-changing recommendations for digital transformation and trade. Let's look at this. So accelerating e-certification. This paper offers practical guidance on how to overcome challenges in implementing digital transformation using a public-private partnership approach from achieving initial buy-in from government and businesses to manage, managing change to ensuring long-term sustainability. New technologies such as the XDC network and innovations are continually transforming many aspects of international trade, driving productivity and strengthening supply chains, but e-certification remains largely elusive with a marked reluctance to digitalize resource heavy paper-based processes. So the International Plant Protection Convention solution represents the pioneering exception, uh, pointing a way forward for wider e-certification to revolutionize paper certification processes governing other areas of cross-border trade, such as animal health and country of origin for imported goods. The Alliance has published recommendations for enabling digital transformation and promoting the adoption of e-certification to support developing countries and least developed countries. This Alliance paper, Accelerating E-Certification, is based on the lessons learned over the past seven years in successfully digitalizing phytosanitary certification in 12 developing countries. Accelerating E-Certification offers practical guidance on how to best implement digital transformation using a public-private partnership approach. The Alliance is currently introducing the IPPC eFIDO solution in several countries and stands ready to implement additional e-certification initiatives. All right, this is posted from Maha Al Sadi on LinkedIn. This is great information, very bullish for blockchains such as the XTC network. Now, we know that the XTC network has connections such as Corda to the DTCC. So DTCC, Clearstream, and Euroclear, which are huge, they're massive, have played pivotal roles in adopting transformative technologies. The objective is to use technology to increase efficiency, resilience, and liquidity while ensuring the safe continuity of financial markets. FMIs are well-equipped to help clients incorporate AI, DLT, and emerging technologies into their operations. DLT and digital asset securities have matured offering operational efficiency and liquidity benefits across asset classes. Their broader regulatory harmonization and standardization and institutional grade payment rails are needed for widespread adoption. Everybody has to be on par. So digital assets are expected to grow to around $16 trillion in the next 15 years presenting opportunities for FMIs to support growth. The adoption of DLT and digital assets is gradual and incremental with various development stages, and that's what we're witnessing right here. Firms have documented operational liquidity benefits and reshaped securities, issuance, settlements, and data transparency. 39% of financial market participants now use some sort of DLT or digital assets. It's a good sign that the ready is the world is ready to jump. The focus is shifting from proprietary deployments to ecosystem deployments for industry-wide benefits. 
The challenges include subscale liquidity pools and fragmentation of digital liquidity. You know, that's one of the benefits of having so many different chains and assets out there. Well, everybody, that's all I have for the video. I hope you did enjoy the content. If you did, please subscribe so you can stay up to date for future content.